Welcome to our service. Uh, are there any announcements? Yes, I have a, a couple announcements, Steve. And I know it's in the bulletin, but I did want to uh, welcome Reverend Ellsbury Chapel to the pulpit this morning. Reverend Chapel is a retired pastor who spent much of his career in Southern Virginia and North Carolina area, preaching various churches. He recently moved to Frederick to be near his uh, children and grandchildren who are in the Frederick area. And Reverend Chapel is a member of the Evangelical Association of Reform and Congregational Churches. So thank you very much for being with us this morning, Reverend Chapel. And Steve, I still have uh, another couple of announcements. Um, the newsletter will be coming out uh, late this week, and I, I guess everybody here knows that our, our annual meeting is January the 23rd, so I just wanted to give a heads up that uh, uh, the annual meeting will be directly after our worship service right here in the sanctuary, because it has to be by Zoom for people who can't attend, and we are expecting to have a, a brief uh, a little bit shorter worship service so we can move into the annual meeting uh, a little bit earlier. Um, and I did want to mention too that uh, just several days ago, you all recall we uh, at our Veterans Day service in November, the collection, the offertory collection from that goes to the Disabled American Veterans. And we received a thank you note from uh, the DAV Chapter 14 in Williamsport, Maryland. Uh, we sent them $300, we received a nice uh, thank you note that I'll put back on the bulletin board. Very appreciative of that uh, $300 gift to them, which they used to assist uh, disabled veterans in the community. Um, and uh, last thing, as most of you know, uh, our county council, Frederick County Council passed a uh, a mask mandate on uh, that came, went into effect Friday evening. And uh, it, it doesn't impact us too much here as long as we maintain six foot of distance between uh, people who are not family members. Uh, however, you know, feel free to wear the mask if that's your choice. Um, but uh, I think that's all it that affects us here is that we keep our distance and uh, we'll be in compliance with that mandate. Thanks, Steve. Great, thank you, Ross. Well, please join me in our conversation. <coughs> God of new beginnings, you wipe away our tears and call us to care for one another. Give us eyes to see your gifts, hearts to embrace all creation, and hands to serve you every day of our lives. We ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Come, let us worship. <coughs> Please join me in our first hymn of praise, Spark the Herald Angels Sing, in our blue hymnal, it's number 184, and we'll sing all three verses.
Please join me in our uh, healthy confession. Reverend, would you like to do that? I am looking to see. I'm on the second page. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. It's all right. I'll, I'll go ahead. That would be fine. Please join me in our call to confession. We know that nothing is able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Let us in freedom confess the wrong we have done. Amen. Lord, forgive us for the times we have worked so hard to be self-sufficient, forgetting our need for you, living independent of your spirit. Forgive us for letting fear and worry control our minds and for allowing pride and selfishness to wreak havoc over our lives. Forgive us for not following your ways and for living distant from your presence. We confess our need for you, fresh, new, again. We ask that you make all things new in our hearts, in our minds, in our lives for this coming year. Anyone in Christ becomes a new person altogether. The past is finished and gone. Everything has become fresh and new. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. Please join me in proclaiming God's word. Our Old Testament reading today is from the book of Joshua, chapter 3, verses 1 through 6. <laughs> Early in the morning, Joshua rose and set out from Shito with all the Israelites, and they came to the Jordan. They camped there before crossing over. At the end of three days, the officers went through the camp and commanded the people that when you see the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God being carried by the Levitical priests, then you shall set out from your place. Follow it so that you may know the way you should go for you have not passed this way before. Yet there shall be a space between you and it, a distance of about 2,000 cubits. Do not come any nearer to it. And then Joshua said to the people, sanctify yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders upon you. To the priests, Joshua said, take up the Ark of the Covenant and pass on in front of the people. So they took up the Ark of the Covenant and went in front of the people. In John chapter 14, verses 1 through 6, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many dwelling places. If it were not so, I would have told you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you will know the way to the place where I'm going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where we are going. And how can we know the way? And Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except through me. Would like to call your attention to two verses of scripture. Excuse me. Um, I apologize for getting in a moment late. Somehow I got on Interstate 70 and tried to go to Hagersville. <laughs> and then I, as quickly as I could, got back. I was planning to be here at 10 30 and be well prepared. So forgive my uh, stumbling if I did that. At the time I said something, I noticed next on the list says sermon, and I guess that's me. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would like to bring a couple of verses that we just read back to our minds that I am focusing on today. 
Joshua chapter 3, verse 4. And God says to us, follow the ark of God so that you may know the way that you should go. For you have not passed this way before. And Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Well, I hope all of you had a wonderful new year yesterday. As uh, has already been stated, I have two children, 15 grandbabies, and the seventh great grandbaby is coming soon. That's why I came to pray. And uh, had a wonderful day, and I trust that you did also. We have just started a brand new year with a brand new slate. We need to learn to follow God in this new year, having no idea what this year may bring, whether it be good health, blessed family, or we have various needs and crises. This is a time of transitions into a new year. And Israel is also at this time time making some very tremendous transitions. They have been planning and moving towards the promised land for many years, and now they are about to cross over the Jordan into the promised land. They have been delivered from slavery. They crossed the Red Sea. They have now traveled for uh, like 40 years, and in the midst of that uh, traveling, they have created, made the tabernacle, the Ark of the Covenant, and the various objects of worship, and God is preparing them and anointing them for this journey and for the new things that are happening. At this point in that journey, they are poised at, at Shittim. Shittim is, a, is on the plain of the Jordan River <clears throat> going east. And uh, it is a place of Achaia groves. Up and down the Jordan Valley, there were many Achaia trees. These are trees with very durable green, orange, when colored, and they are the uh, lumber from which the tabernacle and the uh, altars, etc., had been made as they were journeying towards the Canaan land. Now they're facing a brand new challenge. The Jordan River is flooded, and uh, there are uh, Canaanites in the land, and they are uh, excited yet scared because they've got to cross and there's no bridges. And like we know today, there are no barges. And uh, yet they are camping on the east side of the Jordan with great anticipations of crossing over. I think there's some logistics here that I find very interesting and think you might too. At Shida, they do a head count. There are 601,730 men plus women and children. People smarter than I am have calculated that that was 4.4 million people. And uh, I think we should hopefully somebody pray for Joshua as he led this multitude through the desert and uh, into Israel. But early that morning, they rose up, they broke camp, and they traveled just two miles across the plain between uh, the Jordan River and the mountains of the desert. And there they set up camp just east of the Jordan and the Jericho. The thing I find interesting is that for three days, they made preparations. 
They consulted and made strategy. I'll get it out in a second. Uh, strategy plans confirmed by Jehovah so they could make this journey. Now, if you were facing a Jordan River that was overflowing because of spring, and now it is flushing out all of the wild animals, so your op uh, could possibly meet bears or lions or snakes, I think I'd do some consulting too. And I think you would do some consulting. But they are there ready to travel. In those days of preparation, they sent some spies across to check out the city of Jericho. And you probably remember they came and spent uh, a little time with Rahab. And Rahab, uh, as she hid them and conversed with them, encouraged them. We have heard all about you, she says. Our hearts have melted because we know Jehovah is going to give you our land and our city. And right frankly, they're scared. And they come back and report this to Joshua. And Joshua calls for them to set apart three days. Three days to focus on God. Three days to seek uh, God's will and purpose. And three days to make their plans to cross over and to take the city of Jericho. There's an interesting verse here, verse 10. And it asks the question, who is the living God? There are plenty of gods around in uh, the various uh, different camps of the heathen surrounding Israel. But these gods are dead idols. And yet Jehovah is a living God. I think that's the most, most interesting description of him. He is the living God. And he is consulted before they head into, across the Jordan, into Canaan land. They take the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord, and Joshua sets apart the priests that are to carry that, and all of you, I'm sure, are aware that they carry the Ark on poles on their shoulders, four men on each corner. And as they came down to the river, they are ordered to start across the river. Now, how would you feel if you're given orders to cross the river? There is no bridge. There is no barge. There's nothing but water. It is the springtime, and it's flooded, and you don't know how deep it is. That's quite challenging. And it takes a lot of faith. But the Bible tells us that as the uh, priests with the Ark of the Covenant step into the water of Jericho that it divided. Now the Israelites had seen this before at the Red Sea, but it was nothing like what they saw in the Jordan. In the Red Sea, God simply prepared a path through that sea. Now I think if I had been there and I looked up here and saw God knows how many feet of water and I'm walking between it, I'd probably have been scared again. At this point, what God does at the Jordan is quite interesting. He cuts the water off several miles north of them, south of the Sea of Galilee, and all the water just runs down the riverbed into the Dead Sea. So they don't have a little path. They got the whole seabed. And the whole bed of the sea is dried up before the people as they touch the water. And that's a miracle within itself. How many of you have ever walked in a river? Mud is squishing it. But yet at the same time, God not only sent the water down to the Dead Sea, he also dried up the riverbed so they could get their carts and their people across. All four million of them. Now, imagine for a moment that you are uh, standing on the 
walls of the city of Jericho, which we're told was so wide at the top you could ride four chariots side by side. So you can pretty much imagine some of these people are standing on that uh, up there and they're looking and they're seeing what happens and it brings even more fear into their mind, into their hearts. What I want us to see today, church, this is an awesome story. It is the beginning of Israel taking what God had given to them. It was a new thing, a new experience, a new challenge. And as I read to you a few moments ago, God's instructions to them was to follow the ark so that you may know which way you are to go. Because you have never been this way before. As they took their break, standing before that mighty river, and they knew what God is instructing them to do, they took a lot of courage. The priests led the way, the waters separated, and the people began to follow them as they were headed into Canaan and towards Jericho. Because of their obedience and their faith, God imploded the walls of Jericho. And they rejoiced because God had already given them the first part of his promise of the land of Canaan. We've had something of a similar experience. Yesterday, we transitioned not to the Jordan River, not looking to go into the land of Canaan, but we transitioned into a new year, a perfect year, unsoiled, uncontaminated, that God has given us to enjoy for another 365 or 64 days, it is now. And I think you and I should take, like Israel, they stopped for three days. They consulted, they planned, they talked to God before they made a move. And I would suggest to us that if this is a time, as we have just entered into this brand new year, and hopefully our, our year and our slate is still squeaky clean, Hadn't been but 24 hours and a little over. We need to reassess our lives as Joshua did. We need to think about our past and our presence and what God might be saying to us that we as individuals and as a church need to hear the voice of God need to take steps forward, need to have faith that our Jordan River, whatever that might be, personally or collectively, will open up and that we might receive the blessings in 2022 that God has reserved for and is desiring to give to us as an individual and as a church. It takes time to reassess. It takes time to stand before and wait before God and hear his instructions. And not only do we want to hear it, we want it confirmed. We don't want to go the wrong way because I'm here to tell you, if we follow God, then God is going to open the rivers when they need to be opened. God is going to make provisions for us when that needs to be made. But if we're just trumping on our own in intelligence, God may leave us holding the bag, church. And if he does, we're gonna be in trouble. But I think this is a gorgeous, encouraging lesson. Again, 
Let me share with you that fourth verse, which I think is tremendous. Joshua says, follow it so that you may know the way you should go. For you have never been this way before. I promise you, church, in 2022, you're going to have some temptations, some tests, some trials, probably some crisis. And you and I are going to need divine directions through those situations and through those places. And it's time for us as we begin this year to make our confessions, which we have done this morning, to seek God's purpose and God's will. You see, we're never too old to be doing things for God. I uh, hit 75 last fall. And uh, I have been in ministry for Ordained ministry 54 years and ministry for 60 years, starting when I was a teenager. And God always has a place for us in his church and in our community, in our families and in our neighbors. And his challenge to us today at the beginning of this year is to bring ourselves under his dominion, under his empowerment, under his anointing, so that in 2022, we can walk as he desires us to walk. We can experience his anointing and we can minister to others about us. Wherever we go, in our homes, in our church, in our community, that we can see and sense men, women, boys and girls that are facing challenges and we can come up beside them and give them strength, a helping hand. And when God begins to finger with our own lives and our consciences, we will not uh, stretch, uh, stretch back from finding a place to fall on our face and our knees and confess to God our own weaknesses, our own this falls, and again experience His grace, His peace, and His strength. I would say to you, church, it is time for renewed faith and renewed commitment. And time for us to cross our journey into the land of promise God has offered to us so that we can live pleasing to God. God be with you. And also with you. Let us lift up our hearts. We listen to God. Let us give thanks to God most high. In trying to give God the grace. Lord Jesus, we invite you to your table freely without condition. We cannot earn a seat at your table, yet you are there. We came together as individuals, but have now formed a community of believers. Just as the grapes and the grains of the wheat are transformed, we are also transformed by your grace and by your love. Christ, you have brought us together in to your extraordinary presence. We have no words with which to explain or to fully understand, yet we are here with open hearts and open hands. 
As we work together to make this world a new Jerusalem, we ask that you continue to transform us. A new year is upon us, a year full of your promises and possibilities. Help us to see ourselves in that new light and fill us with a desire for change. You taught us that God's creation is full of abundance to be shared with everyone. Encourage us to share your love, your gifts with those around about us. We have come to this table at your invitation. Once strangers, now family. Together we lift up our voices and give you praise and thanksgiving. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are filled with your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of our God. Hosanna in the highest. For on the night of betrayal, Jesus took the bread and gave after giving thanks to you, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, Jesus took the cup and after giving you thanks, gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. For this is my blood of the new covenant which is poured out for you and many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. In this act of sharing a common meal, we ask the Holy Spirit to come to us. At this table, we are able to see, smell, touch, and taste the gifts that our God freely offered to us. And yet this table is filled with not only God's gifts to us, but also with our dedications to God for a new year. Fill us, Holy Spirit, with the promise of new possibilities and open our hearts to the new Jerusalem here on earth. We ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. The gift of God for the people of God come for all things are ready. God loved us so much that he sent his own son. And Jesus loved us so much that he gave his son on the cross that you and I might have salvation, redemption, and fellowship with God. Let us thank him.
This cup represents the shed blood of Jesus Christ. And the scriptures teaches us that by his blood, we become his children. And his blood also was a cleansing agent to save us and our bodies. Our blood did not cleanse us. We would become very sick people and probably would not live. And Jesus' blood is a gracious and glorious gift to us. And this juice symbolizes that blood. Let us take it. Shall we read together the prayer of thanksgiving? God, God we thank you, you that when the star in the sky is gone, the kings and princes are home, the shepherds are back with their flocks, and we are tempted to pack this story away. This very bread and cup gives us the hope and courage to begin the true work of Christmas. Help us to find the best. Heal the broken, feed the hungry, release the prisoner, rebuild the nations, bring peace to all, and make the heart peace. In struggle and in joy, God is faithful to us. We bring forth our offerings, our tithes, our treasures, our least coins to demonstrate our faithfulness to God. <laughs>
Oh, faithful one, accept these gifts of our hearts and hands. May they be multiplied and magnified as the living presence of Christ in our world. Amen. At the beginning of this year, we implore God's blessings upon our work and pray for the needs of this new year. Lord Jesus, we thank you so much today for the opportunity and the privilege to gather ourselves together to worship you. We thank you for redemption through your son, Jesus Christ, for the power of the cross, for the working of the Holy Spirit that is continually connecting us with you. We ask today that you will bless this church for your grace and your goodness. We ask that you will encourage those that are discouraged and lift them up to sense your presence and to know with a deep assurance that you are God and that you are in control. We pray for those that are sick and unable to be with us today. For those that are homebound. Oh God, we pray for those that uh, are discouraged that you will lift each of them up and let them sense your loving care. Let them sense your presence and have a very deep assurance in their heart and their spirits that you are still God that you are still in control and that you are ministering to them life and strength and grace, both physically and spiritually in their lives. We ask you to go with us through this coming week. May everything that we say and do be that which honors you and pleases you and anoint us by your word and your spirit to touch others around about us, that we might be you, O oh Christ, to those we meet who are discouraged, who are sick, who are facing crisis, who are bewildered with some of the curves and the, the valleys and the crisis of life. Help us, O oh Christ, to be you, to those individuals and to minister your love and your grace to them by the power of your Holy Spirit. Now we pray with me throughout all the time you have, you have blessed, blessed your people, people of God, God and dwelt and dwell among them, them. As, as we begin, begin this year, new year inspire and in guide us that all, that all we do may find in you its, its beginning, beginning and it's fulfilled. Amen. Our Father, Lord in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thank you. Keep it come, thy will be done on earth, earth as it is in heaven. And we give us this day our debts. And forgive us our debts. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the power
just take a moment before I read the benediction. We thank you for the opportunity to come and share with you today. I uh, wish I had not uh, made a fatal mistake and ended up in Hagersville. But uh, I did. That cut out my time to spend with somebody to kind of feel a little more comfortable moving through the uh, liturgy and the service. But uh, that's okay. It's part of life. And uh, we trust God uh, will bless you in a very gracious way. I will continue to pray for you and ask you to pray for me. You are the people of Christ, the people of New Jerusalem. You have been claimed by God. Look bravely into the future and see the promise of the new year. See the abundance of God's gifts in the world. Feel the presence of God in the world with you and go forward in God's strength, love, and grace. Amen. Okay. Okay. 